uh, friends <coughs> this uh, unit is basically uh, taking into consideration <coughs> the various concepts uh, which we try to deploy uh, for uh, utilizing or uh, which are part and parcel of the social sciences and which we can borrow for uh, the sanitation. And I think uh, if you try to speak about that, uh, the basic understanding is that uh, uh, we have to show the linkage uh, which is there. Like when we try to speak about uh, <coughs> certain concepts which are used in economics, how it has its application on sanitation, uh, if we can speak about that. So, I think uh, that is the whole idea. It is a sort of a uh, analysis uh, which is related to the parallel concepts, uh, borrowed concepts in that sense which has its utility for understanding of sanitation. Uh, as uh, we uh, shared earlier that uh, sanitation has something to do with uh, uh, not only the toilets, it is going to be beyond, uh, it is to deal with the, the social uh, component in terms of reform or it has something to do with the uh, economics in that sense in terms of empowerment or we sometimes try to see it in terms of individuality, in terms of dignity, in terms of uh, one's own uh, self respect or maybe we can see it in terms of collective uh, which we try to see uh, in terms of uh, uh, the collective uh, enhancement or uh, impoverishment in that sense uh, which is going to be important. So, that way I think uh, we try to see that uh, we have uh, varied concepts in that sense. I think uh, the very basic thing uh, which I just try to focus upon is that uh, when we say concept, the whole idea in that sense is that how uh, that concept is going to be meaningful or how we can meaningfully link it up. Uh, like uh, the whole idea is that uh, uh, we have to speak about uh, the concepts, uh, the concepts which can be helpful in understanding the phenomenon and that can will uh, lead to the formulation of a specific theory and that of course, is the beauty of concept. So, I think uh, borrowing certain things and can putting it for application uh, is an important concern for <coughs> the issue of uh, uh, the concept and uh, this is uh, the basic attempt of this unit. I think uh, we try to see that. Uh, uh, the issue of poverty in that sense of course, is uh, uh, something which of course, is global and in Indian specific also it has its own value. So, we have to see that how uh, poverty can be seen uh, not only as a concept, but how it can be related to sanitation uh, that of course, is an important aspect. And for that I think uh, we have to speak about uh, that how <coughs> we have this element of uh, uh, Oscar Lewis notion of uh, subculture of poverty uh, which is going to be important uh, because when we try to speak about the subculture uh, subculture of poverty the basic idea in that sense of course, is the people who are trapped into that social environment and how uh, we can speak about their fatalism about the lack of aspirations the exclusiveness or maybe the immediate gratification which they lack. So, it is uh, simply that uh, uh, the subculture of poverty in that sense is basically dealing with the issue of sanitation uh, because the basic idea is that uh, we have to speak about uh, uh, the culture uh, which has its own bearing on uh, the issue of sanitation. So, I think uh, the very basic thing in that sense of course, is uh, it is not simply the material uh, which is important, but it is also the moral uh, destitution uh, which is equally important and we have to see that people who are forced to move they are lost in that sense and we have to see that uh, may they may have the willingness to work, uh, they may have a certain social influence uh, in terms of changing the environment, but their concern in that sense is not taken into consideration. So, the subculture approach of poverty in that sense uh, something dealing with uh, like uh, we try to speak about the slums in that sense. So, uh, the slums can be seen as the best categorization in terms of the issue of sanitation because we say that uh, they believe or they are put into the category of uh, uh, the subculture of poverty. So, along with that I think the issue of sanitation in that sense uh, goes together and that of course, is the whole understanding. Now, I think uh, we try to see that how we try to uh, speak about uh, Weber's type of emotional orientation uh, towards an action. And for that I think uh, the most important thing is that we have to speak about that action which requires an impulsive uh, quality. And that is important because uh, sociologically we have to see that how it is going to influence the way of life. And we have to see that uh, uh, the subculture uh, of poverty in that sense uh, which are part and parcel of any system and it has certain norms and values and which are basically reflected in the poor sanitation and health practices. So, we say that uh, the uh, culture of poverty in that sense which has a bearing of norms and values are going to be reflected in the way of life of an individual and that may lead to 
uh, the poor sanitation and health. So that way I think uh, we try to appropriate uh, the whole issue that uh, the practices which are uh, related to deviant behavior or maybe the attribute of apathy or social isolation or exclusion in that sense, all these things can have uh, certain uh, what you can say implications with regard to the issue of sanitation. So, uh, we try to speak about uh, maybe when we try to speak about the caste, I think uh, it tries to speak about many things. We have uh, uh, people like uh, Dipesh Chakravarti who was trying to speak about that household dirt uh, which has been created and I think uh, the most important thing is that uh, we have to speak about the contribution of uh, Mary Douglas and Mary Douglas in that sense was trying to speak about that the how the household dirt uh, creates a symbolic enclosure and for that I think uh, we have to see that the disorder is coming from inside and this is how we try to see that uh, when you are going outside. So, I think that particular thing in that sense is going to be carried forward. So, we have to see that how we can bridge the gap between the insider and the outside world and that is where I think uh, importance of dirt in that sense is going to be meaningful. Like something which of course is in public in terms of dirt is going to be part and parcel of your life, it is either way or maybe something which is part and parcel of your life is been reflected <laughs> as a dirt uh, in the public scenario. So, we have to see that both of them goes together and the notion of health and illness or maybe the sickness all these things have certain bearings on the cultural behavior, the belief systems and these things are in that sense important because uh, they try to believe on the fact that uh, we have uh, to have these practices like when we try to speak about the manual scavenging. Uh, the whole idea in that sense of course is uh, it is to be seen that uh, the peoples who are forced to carry for uh, the scavenging practices in that sense uh, in terms of the removal of excreta uh, from the public streets. Uh, I think uh, they are basically been attached with a specific way of life and uh, sometimes we try to say that uh, their concern in that sense or their uh, work culture in that sense engage a uh, certain amount of uh, cleaning the dry toilets or sometimes cleaning the public streets and this community in that sense which are basically been uh, doing after or running after the uh, cleanliness of the septic tank. I think uh, it is basically the Delhi High Court in that sense in 2011 has tried to uh, put together uh, with the support of Indian Railways that how to rehabilitate the sanitation workers and in practices now we try to overcome the manual scavenges, uh, scavenging which is associated with the dry latrines and that way we try to see that uh, there is an urgent need to redefine the manual scavengers uh, because I think uh, contextually things have changed and we try to speak about the fact that uh, there is a scheme for <coughs> the self-employment scheme for the rehabilitation of the manual scavengers uh, which has uh, been implemented in 2007 uh, and it has been carried forward till 2010 and the most important aspect is that around several peoples in that sense around 40,000 people in that sense uh, the manual scavengers they have been rehabilitated and we try to see that uh, the concern of the government also is meant for uh, bringing about certain amount of transformation in the lifestyle of these people and then also we have various national advisory committees in that sense which are trying to basically uh, bring about the reforms. So, the whole idea in that sense of course is that when we try to speak about the concept we try to speak about the specific vocabulary which is to be associated with the issue of uh, sanitation. Uh, we have to see that uh, uh, contextually how things are taken into consideration. So, it has a cultural context, it has a certain amount of bearing uh, with regard to the immediate society, even the state for that sake. Like we try to speak about certain categories of state as the Bimaru state. So, the whole idea in that sense of course is that state labeling of that state sometimes may create an issue in terms of uh, uh, having certain amount of uh, uh, what you can say <coughs> subordination and that is where we try to see that there is a need for uh, changing uh, that particular scenario and we have to speak about that uh, uh, there has to be concern for that how the sanitation and the hygienes uh, which are part and parcel of the health survival and development are going to be meaningfully important and we basically try to see that there are various concepts in that sense uh, which we try to use are part and parcel of uh, uh, the issue of sanitation. Although uh, it is not directly linked to them, but definitely we can have an understanding about sanitation with regard to that. Now, the very basic concept in that sense which we try to see uh, which can be directly linked with the issue of sanitation is the idea of pollution. I think uh, the idea of pollution which is basically seen as a category in that sense uh, which has something to do with the environmental laws. 
uh, we try to speak about the pollution in general in that sense as such uh, we try to speak about the air water and the soil pollution, but I think it has to be seen beyond. I think uh, we have to speak about uh, the sort of a pollution which has been uh, associated in a wider framework and it is not simply the environmental pollution which we have to speak about. I think we have to speak about the pollution uh, which has been there uh, beyond. I think uh, when we try to speak about uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, what I can say pollution, I think somewhere we try to say that uh, it has a mixed effect like what the people know about the air pollution was been labeled as smoke or the noxious vapor and sometimes we try to see it as a nuisance, but gradually we try to see that air was not polluted, but rather it was contaminated or tainted or corrupted. So, we have to see that how through time the understanding of the uh, pollution has also changed. So, we have to see that uh, now we have the new forms of industrial waste which are also related to the issue of uh, pollution and that is how we have to see that uh, the rapid urbanization and industrialization uh, which are basically occurring in the 19th centuries now the aspect of pollution in that sense has drastically changed and we try to see that uh, the social reformers in that sense have tried to use the word pollute in that sense to refer to the emission of uh, the air and the discharge into the water and that way we try to see that there are various aspects in that sense which are related to uh, the issue of uh, pollution like the pollution of the rivers in that sense is basically seen as uh, one important aspect. Now, we have this Namame Gange and many other uh, projects in that sense are there which are meant for reviving the <coughs> purity of uh, the rivers in that sense. So, we try to speak about that uh, <coughs> the meaning of pollution in that sense has to be seen uh, categorically in terms of sanitation and the pollution in that sense which has uh, not only a physical component, but it also has a moral connotation and the basic idea in that sense is that uh, we have to see uh, pollution not simply in terms of the legal measures, but we have to see pollution beyond in terms of how the people try to identify uh, the issue of pollution. I think uh, we have uh, certain issues in that sense where uh, we try to speak about the pollution created indirectly by various other sources in that sense, but which were not directly related to the pollution. So, we have to see that how the environmental protection movements in that sense which happened in 1960s and the 70s are going to be seen as a popular discourse uh, in order to debate about this issue of uh, pollution. And for that I think uh, sociologically speaking we have uh, this conception of pure and impure. Uh, which has been talked about by Liu Dumo and uh, he was basically trying to speak about the pure and impure as a specific category to understand <coughs> the issue of uh, uh, sanitation. And we basically try to see that uh, his understanding in that sense was based on the fact that there is a contrast between the upper caste and the lower caste and the Brahmins in that sense who are basically seen as superior in terms of uh, maintaining certain amount of purity and the untouchables in that sense which are basically seen as uh, uh, different from and falling into the category of impure and that is where we try to see that uh, there are certain restrictions which are associated with that. I think it is not simply the question of uh, maintaining distance, but also they have been put off from the utilization of the public resources either it is a question of the ponds or the temples in that sense uh, from which they have been forbidden. So, virtually we try to see that the term untouchables in that sense designate a uh, specific category uh, which basically has certain bearings in terms of uh, having certain amount of uh, uh, what I can say exclusion on various issues. And we try to see that uh, uh, how we are going to put the issue of hygiene uh, which is indirectly linked to the issue of impurity in that sense as such and that is where we have to see that uh, there has to be certain arrangements whereby we can speak about uh, the temporary impurities and the permanent impurity. And that is I think uh, the starting point which has been pointed out by various social scientists. Uh, we have people like uh, P. V. Kane uh, who was basically trying to speak about uh, the history of Dharma Shastra where he was trying to speak about that man's nearest relatives and his best friends becomes untouchables for him uh, for certain limit as a result of uh, different events. So, we try to see that it may be a temporary phase of uh, uh, distancing in that sense, but it does not mean that it has been untouchable uh, in longer terms. So, similarly I think uh, uh, when we try to speak about uh, Dumo's contribution uh, which has been reflected from the various religious texts, 
we try to speak about that uh, he was trying to emphasize upon the dharma or the religious law as an important aspect of uh, maintaining certain amount of purification in terms of shuddhi and uh, his basic concern in that sense was that uh, human being which has various forms of impurity uh, which are resulting from birth till death and the basic idea in that sense of course is that he was trying to speak about the three forms of uh, impurities in that sense which of course people try to avoid and in order to maintain that purity he says that uh, first of all uh, they try to uh, have the purity of their bearing of the family that is the uh, the lineage the kul uh, to which they belong and then the object of everyday use that is the earth that is the the objects in that sense which they try to use into the day to day of life so that also has to be maintained in terms of purity and the third thing of course is the purity of the body that is the sharir so we try to see that uh, all the three things in that sense are going to be quite meaningful we try to speak about uh, that uh, uh, these aspect of uh, uh, what you can say hygiene and these aspect of uh, uh, purity in that sense are been there with regard to our various uh, <coughs> classical literatures and along with that we try to see even the <coughs> use of the specific cloths even the use of, of the specific jewelry even the typology of the foods all these things in that sense were been put into the wider category of pure and impure so that is where we try to see that the concept of purity in that sense uh, has something uh, to do with the societal implication it has its historical genesis and we try to see that uh, uh, these aspects in that sense are going to be important and then i think uh, we try to speak about that how the people in their effort uh, which dumo was trying to emphasize upon that they try to always preserve their purity in that sense and that of course is an important aspect and uh, basically when we try to see that uh, uh, the purity in that sense which is to be maintained i think uh, it's more harsh for the women especially when uh, we try to speak about various aspect in terms of uh, giving birth to a child in that sense and then of course i think uh, Uh, the menstrual cycle and other things which are all part and parcel of the women's life so we try to see that there are various impurity or the component of impurity which has to be avoided when we try to speak about this issue of uh, maintenance of purity and that is basically seen as an important aspect for analyzing the whole issue of uh, the purity maintenance i think uh, apart from that uh, we sometimes say or feel that uh, the issue of pop, uh, purity in that sense uh, which also has certain important elements like uh, we try to speak about the purification in terms of uh, giving offering to certain categories in that sense or having a bath in ganga or maybe trying to use the absorption of the product of the cow or many other things in that sense all these things in that sense are going to be seen as a remedy to uh, maintain certain amount of shuddhi or purification in that sense and that of course is something which has been pointed out uh, in our <coughs> various uh, classical literatures and uh, since dumo was an indologist by training he was trying to uh, see all these things which have been based on uh, the sources which are been reflected into the uh, manusmriti or sometimes we try to see the <coughs> things which are been uh, reflected in some of the important classical literature related to purans and other things so we try to see that uh, the categorization of uh, impure in that sense for certain categories like uh, the chandals in that sense untouchables in that sense all these things in that sense were seen uh, for a specific understanding and the basic idea in that sense was that how we can speak about certain elements of purity within them or to what extent they will be uh, away from the purity that was the biggest challenge uh, which we tried to see are part and parcel of the historical analysis and uh, keeping that particular thing in mind uh, we tried to see that uh, <coughs> certain elements in that sense uh, which are going to be quite important are basically we tried to speak about that there are certain categories which uh, through the process of uh, uh, purifications they have gone for certain amount of changes i think uh, we try to speak about uh, uh, the good practices which have been uh, taken into consideration by the lower caste by the untouchables and how they have been elevated or been accepted by the upper caste i think uh, <coughs> we try to speak about uh, the arya samaj movement which have been there historically which tries to promote certain amount of purification of the categories by uh, leaving certain uh, things in that sense by leaving their occupations by changing their lifestyle and through that they can be put into the mainstream in terms of their acceptance by the wider society so we try to say that uh, this 
uh, notion of pure and impure in that sense has a strong bearing uh, historically speaking and uh, till date we try to see that still that stigma is been practiced as such although there are various uh, legal provisions which have been there in that sense to overcome the issue of untouchability. I think, uh, uh, but still uh, we try to see that the form of untouchability in that sense has uh, changed and the most important thing in that sense of course is that we try to see that the new forms of uh, untouchability in that sense been started practicing. So, that is where we have to see that uh, it is not uh, ending completely, but yeah the frequency has declined or maybe uh, the notion of uh, uh, distancing in that sense has declined in that sense, but uh, saying that it is completely eradicated uh, may be a wrong notion in that sense. And same is another important concept uh, which we can use uh, for analyzing the issue of uh, uh, what you can say <coughs> the issue of sanitation is the idea of inequality. So, one of course was related to the sanitation uh, which is to be seen in terms of pure and impure in terms of pollution in that sense and another of course is the inequality which is seen as a social uh, aspect of sanitation. So, basically when we try to speak about the inequality the basic idea in that sense of course is that uh, uh, we have to uh, treat or we have to understand uh, things in terms of equality that of course is the prime notion and the basic idea in that sense of course is that if we can speak about the equality in totality then we can say that our society in that sense is not having that uh, discrimination. But uh, unfortunately we can say that uh, uh, inequality which has been uh, talked about by various scholars uh, <coughs> like uh, Andrebeti also have tried to spoke about the universal nature of inequality even long back uh, J. J. Russo. Uh, has also tried to speak about the various forms of inequality which are prevalent and sometimes uh, we can say that uh, inequality which has been seen as inevitable in each and every society uh, was to be seen as an important aspect. Now, uh, we try to see that uh, uh, the idea of inequality in that sense also has certain things uh, in terms of uh, putting people away from the mainstream and uh, according to the different aspect of inequality we can say that through space and time. Uh, the inequality in terms of its uh, arrangements have changed uh, from society to society. But again we try to see that how many times or to what extent the equality of opportunity is to be seen in terms of the competitive society. And for that I think uh, we have to speak about that uh, there is always the inequality of reward and the reproduction of inequality is practiced in various forms. So, uh, ultimately we try to see that uh, the inequality of reward is definitely is always there in that sense. And I think uh, Kingsley Davis, uh, uh, Davis and Moore's whole contribution in that sense is speaking about the functional aspect of stratification was trying to speak about that how uh, the inequality has its own value in terms of uh, promoting or motivating the peoples uh, to perpetuate inequality uh, in order to have their supremacy. So, that is where we try to see that uh, uh, there are certain aspects which uh, we cannot negate, but uh, definitely we try to speak about the social inequality and the biological base inequality which of course is quite uh, natural and uh, that way we try to see that uh, when uh, Rousseau was trying to speak about that and uh, gradually uh, Andre Bethe also tried to speak about the natural inequality in his own way. But the basic thing in that sense of course is that we try to speak about the fact that uh, inequality is something which of course is uh, undesirable or it is something which of course has to be avoided. But on the contrary we try to see that inequality in vis a vis the sanitation in that sense is going to be another important aspect because having inequality means that uh, you are deprived of certain uh, basic social conditionings, the social life in that sense, the lifestyle in that sense and your life chances in that sense are going to be away. So, we have to see that uh, this notion of uh, uh, inequality in that sense also has certain bearing on the issue of uh, uh, sanitation and similarly we have also the idea of social exclusion. Uh, definitely the term itself is indicating that uh, exclusion is putting uh, things away from the uh, <coughs> popular notion and uh, this social exclusion which earlier was been seen as uh, uh, reflected and it has been taken into consideration long back from the uh, French Republican and the basic idea in that sense is that uh, it is basically a sort of social disaffiliation uh, which we try to understand. And uh, if we try to see that uh, the social exclusion which has been spoken about by the republic states, they were basically trying to speak about the social exclusion which is multidimensional, it is complex in that sense and the most important thing is that it leads to the lack of or the denial of the resources of certain rights and duties and also 
the goods and services. So, that in that framework if you try to see basically we say that social exclusion in that sense is going to be uh, quite uh, discouraging and it has not to be uh, put into practice uh, in general. And then I think uh, we try to see that uh, there is possibility of deep exclusion which has been talked about uh, people like Amrit Sen uh, who was trying to see social exclusion uh, in terms of uh, uh, the process whereby the state of functioning uh, functional deprivation in that sense is going to be important because he was somewhere trying to reflect upon the fact that uh, it has some bearing with regard to the capability approach and by saying exclusion means that uh, the people in that sense are having a lesser functioning with regard to their contribution to the mainstream. So, it is a state of functional uh, deprivation and that is going to be meaningful when we try to speak about the issue of social exclusion. And then I think uh, people like uh, psychologists like Walker and Walker who were trying to speak about that it is a dynamic process of being shut down uh, from the social, economic, political and the cultural system. So, we have the different notions of uh, exclusion in that sense which is multidimensional especially when we try to speak about the European Union and how they try to see especially this uh, European Union tries to identify uh, certain elements of social exclusion. So, they try to speak about the uh, exclusion in terms of economic which includes your unemployment, it is basically the deprivation of the access to certain assets in that sense such as the property or the credit. It has a social aspect also in terms of loss of individuals linked to the mainstream society and in terms of political uh, it has something to do with uh, the specific category of population in terms of minority or in terms of women or in terms of uh, the religious ethnicity in that sense or in terms of many other human rights uh, which are associated with the specific individual. So, we say that uh, the European Union also try to see the issue or category of exclusion in terms of certain deprivations and then I think uh, we have another important aspect which has been highlighted by Percy Smith and he was trying to speak about the seven dimensions of social exclusion uh, which are to be seen in terms of economic uh, which is basically the long term unemployment, uh, workless households or the income poverty. Then uh, with regard to the social uh, he was trying to speak about homelessness crime, disaffected youth in that sense. In the political framework he was trying to speak about the disempowered, the lack of political rights and the other things and in terms of neighborhood uh, he was trying to speak about uh, the <coughs> categories like slums and uh, other issues in that sense. Uh, from the individual viewpoint he was trying to speak about the physical ill health or the mental ill health uh, that is going to be an important parameter of uh, uh, the exclusion. And similarly in the category of spatial he was trying to speak about the concentration of the vulnerable groups in a specific locality. And in the group phenomenon he was trying to speak about uh, the groups like elderly, disabled or the ethnic minorities who can be treated as the people who are excluded. So, we try to see that uh, uh, according to Percy Smith he was trying to put things uh, in a more wider way and trying to cover up various aspects including geography, social, political, economic and also the individualistic understanding about the exclusion. And then I think uh, we try to say that uh, in the various indicators of social exclusion which may include the financial difficulties in the household, unaffordable use of basic needs in that sense which they can manage in that sense, unaffordability of the consumer du durables or sometimes we try to speak about the disadvantageous housing conditions or sometimes the poor health or the infrequent connect with the friends and the relatives and also the dissatisfaction with the work and the main activity. So, these are the different aspects in that sense which are uh, related to the issue of uh, uh, what you can say exclusion and I think uh, most of the categories in that sense if you try to see uh, they have some bearing with regard to the issue of uh, sanitation because uh, when we try to speak about the sanitation we try to see that uh, it has to have a mainstreaming of the population in totality as such. And if that is not happening of course, I think uh, social exclusion in that sense itself is indicating that uh, uh, putting certain people or categories out and that way I think mainstreaming in that sense is going to be a difficult issue. So, we have to see that uh, the issue of sanitation uh, which has been highlighted by various scholars starting from uh, Amrit Sen and then trying to speak about the contribution of Walker and Walker or maybe Percy Smith. They all were trying to speak about uh, uh, the different ways in which uh, we can speak about uh, the notion of uh, social exclusion. The next in that sense uh, category or the concept which can be uh, related to the issue of sanitation is the concept of exploitation. 
and exploitation itself is again indicative of uh, a certain amount of uh, sanitation because uh, it is to be seen as that exploit means uh, somebody who is having an unfair advantage over the others. And that is where we try to see that exploitation uh, which in a typical Marxist stance is basically seen as uh, a core element of exploitation is to be seen in terms of economy. And in that framework if you try to see we can say that exploitation is seen as challenging phenomenon because uh, when Marx was trying to speak about that particular thing in terms of the labor theory of value, uh, he was basically trying to speak about the notion of exploitation. And uh, when he was trying to speak about the theory of surplus value, he was indicating about the issue of exploitation uh, which is been done by the capitalist uh, for their workers. So, we try to see that uh, the concept of exploitation uh, which again has a common a closer association with the issue of uh, sanitation uh, in terms of uh, uh, making certain arrangements to overcome that uh, exploitation uh, in order to have the better sanitation. The basic idea in that sense of course is that we have to speak about uh, the inverse interdependent welfare principles which are to be deployed. Sometimes we can say that it has the element of the exclusion principles and sometimes it has the element of appropriate principles in that sense. So, in the different formats uh, we try to see that uh, the material interests of the peoples in that sense are not being served and we try to see that exploitation is seen as a process whereby there is certain amount of inequalities in rights and uh, duties or in terms of power uh, which are going to be important. And Karl Marx for that sake was trying to refer to the rate of exploitation as an important category uh, when he was trying to refer to the surplus value. And while saying that the surplus labor which he was trying to speak about. I think uh, he was trying to speak about that how that uh, unequal rate of exploitation uh, is leading to more miseries to the workers and with that of course, I think uh, it may lead to another stage of alienation uh, which of course, has been talked about by Marx in his own way. So, we try to see that uh, it has to be seen uh, in a relative understanding that A exploits B, but and then A takes unfair advantage of the B. In both the conditions in that sense we try to see that the exploitation of B is taking place. So, we have to see that to exploit a person uh, involves the harmful uh, or the instrumental utilization of his capacities uh, for one's own advantage. That of course, is the nominal understanding about what the exploitation is. And if, in in, if, if it is on a capitalistic framework theory, we try to say that it is income which is derived through the forced or the unpaid uh, surplus labor. And for that the product which is coming out from the workers control which is beyond the control of the worker is been seen as an exploitative phenomenon. So, we say that uh, exploitation in that sense of course, is to be seen as a, a way in which the peoples uh, who are being put for uh, sanitation practices are to be seen very differently. So, exploitation of a person consists of the wrongful behavior and we try to say that it involves certain amount of moral norms of protecting the vulnerables in that sense uh, that is going to be an important aspect. And the most important thing in that sense of course, is that exploitation is also psychological uh, because it has a value in terms of uh, uh, not only social or economic, but it is also seen as psychological because when we are saying exploitation it means that it is disturbing one's own capability or one's own mindset. And that is where we try to see that exploitation is going to be quite uh, significant when we try to speak about uh, the notion of uh, uh, sanitation. So, I think uh, the practices which are to be attempted or which are to be done, the basic idea in that sense is that uh, we have to speak about uh, the ways in which we can overcome the issue of exploitation. So, lesser is the exploitation, uh, more is the aspect of sanitation which we can speak about. So, the whole idea in that sense of course, is either it is in the Marxian framework or in the psychological framework, we have to speak about the fact that how the exploitation in that sense is going to be quite critical and meaningful. Then another concept uh, which we can use uh, in terms of uh, uh, what you can say sanitation is the concept of ostracism. Ostracism in that sense is basically seen as a practice or putting the exclusion of certain specific categories from the social stratification. And the whole idea in that sense of course, is that this ostracism in that sense has certain uh, elements which has something to do with the certain taboos and the customs 
uh, concerning certain social rejections and social acceptance of certain categories of peoples in that sense. We try to see that the law of ostracism is basically meant for uh, putting people uh, from the democratic institutions and we basically try to see that the people are not in a position to grab the benefits of the democratic processes and the ultimately it has lead to certain amount of disjunction from the mainstream. And within that framework if we try to see, we try to speak about that uh, it is basically trying to uh, putting the people from the mainstream and uh, the democratic state uh, which basically tries to follow or to go for against the issue of uh, ostracism has to see it very seriously that how uh, the phenomenon of ostracism can be overcome. And we basically try to see that uh, this ostracism has uh, something to do with uh, how the people's their participation into the mainstream in that sense is going to be challenged. And uh, parallelly another term uh, as a concept in that sense which we can uh, see as an important uh, uh, phenomenon uh, which has some bearing with regard to the issue of sanitation is the concept of stigma. And this stigma is again I think uh, it may have a psychological bearing also and it has a social bearing too. So, stigma is basically seen as an act of uh, stigmatizing uh, in terms of uh, labeling in that sense as such and putting the people off from the mainstream. And uh, I think uh, Eric Boffman uh, who was uh, in his work was trying to speak about the stigma uh, in terms of uh, his understanding about how the stigma can be critical with regard to the social exclusion. And stigma for that for him is a process which leads to certain individuals to be systematically excluded uh, from the particular sort of social interaction because uh, they possess a particular characteristics and because of that they are not going to be part of that mainstream uh, <coughs> what you say, population. So, we try to see that uh, it is an uh, outsiderness which is going to be important when we try to speak about the stigma and the whole idea in that sense of course is that uh, it has uh, something to do with the dramatical understanding in that sense also uh, especially in terms of the specific symbols which are used <laughs> we try to speak about that. Uh, uh, the social structure which are provided for interaction and within that framework uh, certain categories of people in that sense they are been put off or they are excluded and that stigma in that sense is attached with them and because of that they are been deprived. So, we basically try to see that it is not simply the biological biologically deterministic perspective rather we try to see that it has a negative evaluation of certain people based on certain specific practices and the most important thing in that sense is that we try to see that uh, it has an exclusionary element because stigma in terms of perspective is for a specific uh, disease, it can be for a specific uh, disability in that sense as such or maybe with regard to the stigma with regard to a specific uh, occupation. So, we try to see that uh, the stigma in that sense is going to be quite uh, relevant because it has a cultural bearing, it has a societal implication, it has a, rel a relational understanding and more than that of course, I think it is seen as a compelling argument in that sense uh, which is putting the people out. So, I think uh, the stigma in that sense is again uh, a term which of course, can be seen as closely associated with the uh, uh, the issue of uh, it is a vocabulary which is closer to or can be linked to the issue of sanitation. And then I think uh, another concept uh, which we can earmark is the concept of social inclusion uh, which of course, is basically seen as a good practice and uh, this social inclusion in that sense is uh, I think now we try to speak about the inclusive development or inclusive growth. So, the basic idea in that sense of course, is that it tries to signify or it tries to indicate that how social inclusion as a important uh, element of uh, sanitation can bring about or bridge the gap between the uh, inequality or the distance which is there in that sense. So, virtually we try to see that the inclusion in that sense is for the people who are excluded in that sense uh, that of course, is going to be the notion. But the most important thing in that sense is that whenever we are trying to see the uh, inclusion, uh, it has to be seen in terms of uh, the horizontal mobility or sometimes it is the vertical mobility which is equally going to be important. So, whenever we try to speak about the horizontal or the vertical mobility, the basic idea in that sense is that we have to speak about either the horizontal or the vertical mobility. The basic thing in that sense of course, is that when Sorokin was trying to speak about both the things, it is basically the process whereby 
people they try to have certain amount of uh, inclusion in that sense because both the mobilities may directly or indirectly lead to certain amount of <coughs> inclusion of certain categories of the people. So, the use of inclusion and exclusion as a concept uh, can be seen as an important category for the issue of sociology of sanitation and within that framework we can see that uh, there are certain specific uh, uh, societies in that sense especially the traditional societies or maybe we have the developing or underdeveloped societies where still I think uh, the practices of exclusions are there. So, I think uh, more and more practices which are associated with the inclusion uh, is going to be important and for that I think uh, the government will or the political will in that sense is going to be important because they can devise the ways in which the people can be included. I think uh, uh, in the Indian scenario if you try to see uh, we basically says that uh, now <coughs> the new government in that sense is basically trying to focus upon uh, the inclusionary uh, politics in that sense whereby the inclusion in that sense is going to be the uh, way in which the development has to take place. So, it is basically uh, <coughs> uh, uh, you have to see that uh, uh, what the statement goes that sabka saath sabka vikas. So, it is basically the inclusiveness which has to be there in which uh, the people they have to be uh, seen in terms of development when the development of all is there and that of course, is a popular notion uh, which has been practiced by <coughs> uh, by the government in that sense as such and the basic idea in that sense of course, is the wider is the inclusion, the more is the sanitation with regard to the reforms and more is the adjustment and the accommodation of the peoples towards the better living. And that is where I think uh, the concept of uh, inclusion in that sense is going to be seen as a positive inclination towards uh, the issue of sanitation. And then I think uh, another important concept uh, which we can relate to uh, the issue of uh, uh, sanitation is uh, the concept of marginalization. And marginalization I think uh, the term itself indicates the specific tendencies of the uh, people in that sense of the societies uh, where peoples who are been far removed in terms of uh, uh, specific uh, <coughs> reasons in terms of their contributions and we basically try to see that marginalization has its uh, aspect which is uh, either sociological, economic, political or even psychological. So, marginalizations may uh, manifest uh, in varied forms. It can be the genocides, it can be the ethnic cleansing or it can be uh, xenophobic arrangements in that sense or it can be any other social or economic hardship. Uh, all these things in that sense can be linked to uh, the whole issue of marginalization. And the basic idea in that sense of course, is that when we try to speak about <coughs> the Indian nation, I think uh, the sort of uh, distribution of population uh, which is there in the three broader segments, uh, it is either the, <coughs> the rural, the urban or the tribal. We try to see that uh, the issue of marginalization in that sense uh, varies with regard to the nature of society. Uh, we have the Dalits, we have the tribals or the backward classes and how they are to be seen in terms of uh, excluded. And we have to see that uh, the bearing of marginalization in that sense is going to be uh, an important aspect. And within that framework, we have to see that uh, the marginalization which has uh, something to do with uh, the existence of hierarchy of inequality uh, within the group is going to be an important aspect. And how we can minimize uh, the degree of marginalization that of course, is an important attempt. And I think uh, in the framework of uh, sanitation, we can say that lesser marginalization will lead to uh, more sanitation practices. And that is where we try to see that uh, the legal measures, uh, the political measures in that sense and the societal measures, uh, they have to come forward for putting or lighting the uh, people in terms of their upliftment and trying to prove them into the mainstream. And along with that, I think uh, another important concept uh, which we can relate uh, with the issue of uh, sanitation is the issue of humiliation. So, I think uh, when we try to speak about the concept of humiliation, I think uh, we can say that humiliation basically means and forcefully uh, lowering a person or a group. It is a process of subjugation and also it is basically stripping away one's pride and order or the dignity uh, which is going to be important. So, we say that to be humiliated is to be placed against your will and often it is seen as hurtful to the individual or the category of the people uh, who are being put into that particular situation. So, humiliation in that sense entails a demeaning treatment that transgress the established expectations and it may involve the act of force including the violent force. And that is where we try to see uh, it has an element of victimization 
and we try to see that the concept of humiliation uh, it rests on the principle of self respect and which has been uh, highlighted by Margalit. And uh, uh, Margalit was trying to speak about the issue of humiliation in terms of uh, uh, having certain element of self respect and uh, it is basically been defined as any sort of behavior or condition that constitutes a sound reason for persons uh, to consider his or her self respect injured. So, it has certain bearings on the self respect which is going to be highlighted uh, by Margulit and the most important thing in that sense of course, is that when he says that uh, I claim that humiliation is uh, to be seen as a rejection of a human being from the family of man. I think this of course, is the worst part if you try to speak about the humiliation in terms of its uh, uh, rigidity and what we try to have to see is that uh, it is against the mankind or the humility that we have to speak about this particular act. So, uh, we have to see that how do the people understand humiliation and we have to see that humiliation is to be seen as subjugation of the human being, it is to be seen as illegitimate and sometimes we try to say that it is having an element of degradation, sometimes we try to see that it has an element of lack of legitimacy and sometimes we can say that humiliation is trying to put things down or pushing somebody down in that sense and it has a relational value. So, for that sake I think uh, we have to see that uh, it has an element of didactic relations, humiliation is vis a vis somebody else and that is where we have to see that how the epistemological instance of explaining the humiliation in that sense is going to play a crucial role. And in the framework of uh, uh, sanitation we can say that humiliation in that sense is not going to be seen as uh, an accepted category and uh, the form of an understanding about humiliation has to be minimized in that sense that of course, is the way in which we can speak about uh, the <coughs> uh, process of uh, sanitation. So, that of course, is where we try to see that humiliation vis a vis the sanitation and then I think uh, the next uh, important concept uh, which we can just link up with this issue of sanitation which of course, goes uh, perfectly with the sanitation is the idea of social justice. So, the social justice which of course, I think has been talked by various philosophers or maybe the economist and political scientist and sociologist in that sense. We try to see that uh, different peoples have different viewpoints about how the social justice has to be seen. And we say that uh, like people like Plato who was trying to speak about that justice was achieved when a person receives the goods and the they deserves. I think this is where we try to see that uh, if somebody what they deserves get it. So, it means that justice is attained. So, that is what Plato was trying to uh, inspire and then I think uh, Aristotle also was trying to say on the similar lines that justice was a principle that ensures that social order by regulating the distribution of uh, benefits. So, we try to see that uh, its maintenance of order which was important, the maintenance of the uh, hierarchy or the inequality which is to be important if that happens. So, we are trying to speak about the social justice, but I think uh, this is where we try to see that uh, uh, things have been seen by uh, the initial philosophers, but gradually I think there was a shift in that sense. We try to speak about that uh, uh, people like John Stuart Mill who was trying to speak about the distribution of societal goods uh, which are to be seen in terms of greatest net balance of satisfaction and I think that is where we have to see that uh, the greatest net balance of satisfaction has to be there in that sense uh, which has its utility that is going to be an important uh, principle uh, whenever we try to speak about the issue of social justice and carrying forward that particular aspect. I think John Rawls who was trying to speak about the concept of social justice, he was trying to speak about the utility rather he was trying to speak about the fact that it is it lies with the distributional justice in that sense. So, all social values uh, which are to be distributed equally, uh, they are to be distributed to such an extent that the values to everyone uh, should be in such a position that nobody is in a disadvantageous position. So, that of course, is what John Rawls was trying to indicate and gradually I think uh, John Rawls uh, uh, framework was being picked up by Amrit Sen uh, who was trying to speak about the two principles of justice. One of course, is guaranteeing the fundamental individual liberties especially for the uh, for speech, for association, for worship and other things and second was ensuring the social and economic inequalities are arranged to offer the greatest possible benefits to the worst of society. 
So, I think uh, this is where we try to see Amrit Sen was trying to speak about the idea of justice. First is the guaranteeing the fundamental individual liberties and second of course, is providing the greatest possible benefits to the worst of so in the society. So, this is where he was trying to locate the idea of justice and we try to see that the concept of justice uh, has something to do with uh, providing certain elements of virtue. So, it is the virtue of the uh, society uh, which is going to be celebrated and that is where we try to see uh, giving one's due or getting one's due is going to be the important principle uh, which has to be seen as crucial when we try to speak about the notion of justice. And within that framework, uh, we try to see that it may involve certain amount of uh, benefits which can be both tangible in terms of wealth and prestige and also in terms of intangible well benefits like the self-respect or maybe the issue of uh, giving space uh, of equality in that sense. All these things in that sense are going to be uh, treated as part and parcel of the element of social justice. And sometimes we can say that this social justice in that sense is basically seen as a way in which uh, people uh, human consciousness have changed drastically and uh, it is basically the advent of science which tries to speak about that uh, the death of God in that sense has to be seen that justice in that sense is going to be seen as uh, giving uh, what you can say certain amount of benefits to certain categories of people. So, we try to see that uh, <coughs> these are certain specific aspect which has been highlighted uh, when we try to see the element of social justice and uh, within that framework I think uh, initially we try to speak about that this notion of justice started long back with uh, the advent of French revolution and uh, we are I think uh, whole of Europe in that sense was trying to plead for the social justice in terms of equality, uh, liberty and fraternity and then the justice was seen as one of the important uh, element within that particular framework. So, we try to see that uh, uh, different peoples they try to see how the justice in that sense has to be carried forward, how it has to be seen uh, across societies in a specific way and that is where we try to see that uh, the whole idea of social justice in that sense is that where we try to see that the uh, benefits are to be given uh, to the right person. I think uh, for that sake uh, Robert Nozick's contribution is going to be important because he was trying to emphasize upon not the idea of uh, uh, justice in terms of giving the benefits rather he was trying to speak about that historical entitlement of the peoples uh, which they have been deprived. I think through the distributive justice uh, these things are to be given to them and for that I think uh, uh, he was trying to see that justice as fairness is going to be seen as an important model uh, to bring about the changes. And within that framework we try to see that uh, the most important aspect that happened of course is that the social justice uh, which are to be seen as the important habits of justice is uh, saying that they are social in two senses. One of course is that the skill which the person requires are to be provided in that sense and it aims at the good of the society. So, in both the framework we say that it has a social element because it is basically trying to inspire the peoples for integration for being part of the society, the larger society and another important thing in that sense of course, is that it is meant for the uh, good of the society uh, that is going to be an important issue. And from that viewpoint we can say that uh, the contribution of Robert Nozick in terms of social justice and as enlightenment uh, can be strongly admired because he was trying to see that whatsoever is the entitlement of uh, an individual are to be given and it can be seen in terms of uh, the compensatory justice or justice as fairness uh, in the longer terms. And we try to see that uh, it involves a certain element of uh, uh, what uh, Amrita Sen says that uh, government has to uh, devise certain actions to improve the idea of social justice and in terms of that he was trying to say that uh, the issue of poverty if it has to really uh, take place, uh, how it has to be overcome and for that he was trying to speak about the capability approach that how we can uh, have this issue of social justice when we are trying to enhance the capabilities of the individuals. And that is where we try to see that uh, <coughs> the importance of uh, uh, justice is going to be important and I, as I said that justice has its closer association uh, with this whole issue of uh, uh, what you can say <coughs> the uh, social sanitation because it has certain things uh, which I think are going to be crucial. Uh, next in this category is the concept of empowerment and the concept of empowerment which is going 
uh, beyond this element of capability or is an extension of capability in that sense we can say that the concept of empowerment has to be seen in terms of the categories of the peoples who are marginalized they are to be uh, put together into a wider stream and the most important thing in that sense of course is that empowerment has to be seen in terms of the social transformation uh, of the structure and where the ordinary and the common peoples they have to have uh, certain benefits and the most important thing in that sense is that we have to speak about the idea of empowerment in terms of uh, the virtual context and which has to be uh, related to the element of uh, constitutional arrangements. Uh, we have to speak about the empowerment whereby the government machineries or the state in that sense is going to intervene and through that I think uh, we can speak about the issue of empowerment. So, I think uh, empowered citizens in that sense can have the better uh, notion of uh, uh, creating a healthy society in terms of sanitation and that of course is an important aspect. So, uh, we try to see that uh, the directive principle of state policies uh, which was basically trying to speak about the universal elementary education up to the age of 14 years was trying to bring about certain amount of uh, uh, changes in terms of empowerment. Similarly, we try to speak about the women empowerment and within that I think when we say empowerment of women the basic idea in that sense of course is that it is to be seen as mediating the relationship between uh, the two genders uh, in terms of power and within that framework we try to speak about the fact that uh, the feminist experts uh, who were trying to speak about uh, the uh, so called uh, uh, empowerment were trying to speak about uh, in terms of control of the resources of women in that sense and also their decision making capacities if they are there then only we can uh, speak about the issue of empowerment. So, virtually we try to see that the focus of empowerment in that sense is towards the capacity building in that sense. I think uh, uh, the organizations which are uh, basically working for the uh, empowerment of women in terms of self employed women's association that is SEVA uh, uh, who had uh, uh, this lady Ila Bhatt in that sense who has been associated with this uh, organization since 1972 and we try to see that there are various dimensions of empowerment which we can speak about. It is psychological uh, uh, which has to be seen in terms of self image and identity, it has to be seen in terms of acquiring knowledge or sometimes we can see it as cultural in terms of redefining the gender roles or recreating the practices or it has to be seen in terms of social uh, which means the leadership in community action or we can see it in terms of economic uh, which is basically the ownership over the productive asset or in terms of entrepreneurship development as such. It can be seen as organizational also in terms of collective identity or in terms of organizational leadership and then we can speak about the political uh, which is directly having uh, negotiation of the power and association uh, in terms of assessing to the political power that is going to be important. So, within that framework we try to speak about the fact that uh, the issue of empowerment in that sense has to be seen as an important issue and finally, I think uh, the issue of hygiene which of course, has a direct bearing on the issue of uh, sanitation. I think it is not just about cleanliness, uh, we have to speak about uh, how to prevent uh, the disease uh, that is going to be an important issue and within that framework we try to speak about that hygiene has something to do with the so called uh, bodily uh, uh, safety in that sense and we try to speak about the things in terms of lifestyle and the behavior and the mindset. And then I think uh, we try to see that how the habits are to be put uh, into a larger order that hygiene is a larger matter of the human behavior uh, which is de determined in terms of social traditions and the practices in that sense. So, I think uh, this is where we try to see the various concepts in that sense. Uh, which are directly or indirectly uh, related to the issue of uh, sanitation. And I think uh, within that framework if you try to see that sociology of sanitation in that sense has a uh, bearing of these concepts which we try to indicate. And the basic idea in that sense of course, is that whenever we try to speak about these concepts, the basic idea is that uh, we have to see those things in practices. And the most important aspect of course, is that it is the governmental will in that sense. Uh, how the hygiene promotions have to take place and how it has to be put into the public. That of course, is an important aspect and within that framework we have to see that uh, the idea of dirt which has been talked by uh, Perry Douglas that has to be put at the backstage and we have to see that how we can speak about the things in terms of uh, putting the dirt off and putting the hygiene uh, into the public sphere. 
Uh, so friends, I think uh, these are the ways in which we can speak about uh, uh, certain elements of uh, uh, <coughs> the concepts, the battery of concepts uh, which are part and parcel of the social science across the disciplines and they had certain bearings on the issue of sanitation. I hope that uh, these concepts will help you or enable you in understanding the various facets of sanitation which I think is the basic agenda of this course and uh, it is basically trying to see beyond uh, the physical sanitation we have to see in terms of societal sanitation also that is going to be an important aspect. So I hope uh, you will enjoy this uh, uh, deliberations and uh, uh, we will be discussing uh, other elements of the issue of sanitations uh, in the coming lectures. Thank you for your patience listening and thank you once again.